Um, as you may or may not know, we're on Spectrum Theater's um, Neurodiversity Matters Conference. Um, so I'm an artist, founding member, et cetera, et cetera, of, of Spectrum Theater. And this panel is, we will be discussing um, the programs at the Norwich Free Academy with Philip Trostler. Uh, so hi, Philip. Hey, hi, so, everyone. Thanks for having me. No problem. So we're just going to uh, have Philip discuss some of his school's programs for a little bit, uh, and then we will uh, open it up for questions from Facebook Live, if you have any, and I have a few questions myself. So if you, you know, so. Great, so uh, yeah, I, uh, I work in Norwich Free Academy. It's a uh, public private school in Norwich, Connecticut. It means it's the school of choice for about nine different towns. But it's, it's a normal high school, public school. Um, I started working there as the theater director slash theater teacher in 2016. Been working there for four years. I'm an alumnus of the school. I did theater while I was there. Went off into the real world. Uh, got my degree in theater. Acted a little bit in London and New York. Ended up in Los Angeles for a while before I decided I think it was about time to teach. So came back. Uh, within a year, I was lucky enough to get that job at my, uh, my high school. So when I started working there, they have always had a theater program, but it wasn't a consistent yearly big thing. In fact, when I started, it was more of a part-time position because maybe for four years, there would be an English teacher running it. And then for two years, they'd bring somebody in from the community to teach a class. Then they'd have somebody else do a show. So when I got hired, my goal was to really just sort of transform it into more of a professional, real way to get these kids what they need on their way to college and, and professional. Uh, so that's turned out really well. Um, it's been a journey. Uh, you're talking to me at the end of year four. So tenure is right around the corner. It's been fun. Um, we've done three shows a year consistently. We've had kids go off to college. We've had kids uh, do lots of different interesting things. But uh, in terms of neurodiversity, uh, it's a huge part of what we do in that I don't think there's a show we've done out of like 12 shows we've done since I've been there that didn't have at least a few kids on the spectrum in those shows. Absolutely positive, because a lot of my major actors, I find out after the fact that they're going through this on their own. Um, and then also we have a program called Unified, which is for science, art, uh, cooking, and now Unified Drama, we have mainstream students, special ed students combined into one class doing active learning, social learning. And those are classes that now are getting much bigger and, and better. So it, there's a lot, I mean, there's a lot of different ways we, we deal with lots of different kids. So if there's anything specific you want me to, to hit upon, I'm happy to. Yeah, so, um, so again, we, 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 we're, asking for questions as well from anyone who has them, but for, for myself, um, so obviously, you know, you, you discussed how you have both neurotypical students, neurodiverse students. Uh, well, you know, we, we, I spend, we usually refer to them as neurodivergent and the combining together of the two is the neurodiversity, but okay. so how do you, how do you dress inclusion in your program? How do you, how do you bring the, the various you know, groups, various people with various abilities together to make a show? It's, it's, maybe it's because I, I didn't start teaching until I was 30, but I never really had an idea of what the right way or the wrong way was to, to include kids. So it's just a natural thing where it's anybody that wants to do it. Um, anybody can take the classes. And then in terms of auditions, um, I just didn't come in, I came in with a clean slate. So all the favorites were pushed to the side. It just became this thing where if you can audition and you earn a part, you get it. And so that's why, I mean, I'll, I'll tell you about Unified um, briefly. When I started my very first class, my very first day as a high school teacher was Unified Drama. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't necessarily students on the spectrum but it was a whole variety of students that took special ed classes. And because when I'd been hired, it was a part-time position, Unified Drama was created to give me another class. Okay. And so right from the first day they put me in, I'm with um, 
all different types of students. There's a few paraeducators and I didn't know the right way to deal with them. I didn't know the wrong way to deal with them. I just naturally took them as who they were, talked to them as individuals. Um, and I, I would get this, I'd get praise from the paras not knowing why, because for instance, a kid might say hello and want to put his hand on my shoulder or he might want a physical contact or he might need a little break because it's a little too much uh, stimulation for him. And it never bothered me. It was never this thing where, oh, we have to stop class. So-and-so is having an issue. It just became this natural community thing. And so that was probably the best possible way to start my high school career because yes. it just happened. And um, leading into the, the, the full theater program, we call it NFA Play Shop, mm -hmm. the full theater program. I remember the first fall, like the first day or so, I got an email from a parent. And it was a parent of a student who has autism. Mm -hmm. And she emailed me and just said, he's going to be a freshman. I've heard you're the new teacher. He's interested in acting. It'd be fantastic if you just you know, kept an, kept an eye out for him. Uh, make sure he's involved. Um, he's great at memorizing. You know, we'd love. So I don't know. I've never worked with autistic students. I've never worked with students before. So right away, all these different students are coming in. And this particular student happened to audition for the first show as a freshman, and he happened to get cast in a big part as a freshman. And mm -hmm. there was no, I didn't remember it was him. I didn't notice the name. He just came on stage. Um, you know, he's a very specific person, but so is everybody. Yeah. So he did his job. <clears throat> uh, that extended to be his entire four year of working with my program. And I, I think it helped him just socially in terms of other things as well. But I just, I never kept a box of like, here's these kids, here's those kids. If they audition, if they audition, they don't get a part, but they want to do better. I'm happy to work with them as well. But there's never been a separation really. Right. Okay. Um, so going from there. Um, so obviously you, you said that you, you know, you, you literally started basically out of the frying pan. <laughs> I, I yep. guess it's a good way to put it, right? Yep. So, um, going with that, you know, you, you said you've been working for four years. What are some of the challenges that you've discovered in, while, while working with people on the Spectrum Union program? And how have, you, how have you worked to resolve those challenges and make them positive? It's a good question. Um, you know, I'm always, I'm very aware of how I interact with, with students as individuals and so I know that for some students they might want a little more tough love some of them might need a little more reassurance uh, and I generally I just try to keep a, a consistent demeanor and a consistent they know that they, they know that if I'm going to harp on something it's important and they know that I'm going to hold them to high standards right. and so at some points it can be a little challenging for new students but at the end of the day I'm always told that was the best thing you know that's why I was able to succeed Mm -hmm. So in terms of spectrum, mm -hmm. um, you know, I have three, to my knowledge, I have three major players in my group who have various degrees of autism or Asperger's. Yeah. And in fact, it's so funny that you guys invited me for this now, because literally like a week ago, I found out that third guy was on the spectrum, mm -hmm. had no clue. He's a senior. <laughs> He's been in shows. He did Shakespeare for me this year. I had no clue. He was like a class president. And I guess I found out because he and his mother did a live stream on Autism Awareness Day talking yeah. about his journey. I had no clue. And so with him, and I've had leads of musicals, and I've had the student I was talking about at the beginning, to different degrees, the ones that I was aware of, I would find out in different ways. So the first one, mom emailed me, new school, wants to make sure he's being looked out for, worked out great. Um, the second one is someone who joined that year as an 11th grader. He had been there for two years before I arrived. And I've heard from the choir teacher and from his family because he was so involved in the arts that for the first two years, he was very socially awkward, had a hard time talking to others, very quiet, very sensitive. Uh, by the time he auditioned for my musical, because he's such a great singer, I never would have known. He came into the audition a little nervous, but so is everybody. But it was brought to my attention pretty quickly because they wanted to make sure that this went well and it's a new thing for him and a new thing for me, that he takes criticism very harshly. He takes it very personally. Mm -hmm. And so that 
my first year teaching, that was something that really set me to where I am now in that when I gave criticism or constructive criticism to the cast, when I said, hey, everybody, we need to work on this, or hey, I'm not sure this was the way we want to do it, let's do this. I always made sure that that student and anybody else that was doing a good job got positive praise separate. Mm. Because I think one of the early rehearsals, you know, we're learning, hey, everybody, I need you to go home and work on this. This is not the way, this is not where we need it to be. You know, I guess he would go home and he wouldn't, you know, complain, but he'd be sitting and wondering, oh no, I'm doing poorly. What am I going to do? Yeah. And so as soon as I heard about that, I talked to him, I found out what his background was, told him he was doing a great job. But that lesson stuck with me in that always, you know, make sure the kids that are doing a good job know, make sure there's always a little bit of a carrot at the end of that branch, right? Yeah. Um, and I think with the two kids I knew from the beginning were on the spectrum, that was always something I looked at was make sure they know they're not going home going, well, everyone else is doing a bad job. I guess I'm doing a bad job. It's like, no, I'm doing this well. Um, be happy with that, but know there's always way for, room for improvement. Basically, and, you have to make the implicit explicit as I, some of my friends at Spectrum like to say, right? Yes, yes. And it was, it was a learning experience for me. Yep. Um, but it was great though, because I can do that with any student. Yeah. And any student needs to hear uh, both. Yeah. And I can use it in my classes when kids give feedback to each other. Don't start with the negative, positive, a little bit of negative. What do they need to work on? But end with an overall positive. Exactly. Um, yep. So, you know, that type of stuff. Um, but I'm always, I just, I'm more aware because I may know something more as a teacher than the other students do. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure, you know, in high school, if someone's a little different, if someone says something, a little strange if someone that can be a, a a stigma but i try to keep a community and an environment where everyone feels comfortable and actually the thing with i'm sure you <laughs> with theater is that everyone is so different it doesn't matter you know it's not just the spectrum everyone's so different that um it just naturally is a place that's very inclusive yeah. so i i think like i said with the unified class I think having access and having interaction with with students like that from the beginning mm -hmm. is the best possible thing that could have happened to me. I, I was coming from the professional acting world in Los Angeles, and I was, you know, I I want to I don't want to say I was uh, rough or anything, but I was I was coming from adults. I was working with adults. I wasn't worried about censoring myself. I wasn't worried about being. You know, I'm naturally nice. I would hope, but I wasn't worried about that. So having that challenge put forth to me right from the beginning, that led me to change the way I thought. And it led me to look for things and it led me to become a better teacher and, and a better person. So I, I have, that's why I'm, I'm so thrilled to even find out the third student is because I'm sure there's more. I'm mm -hmm. sure there's people I don't know about that have their own personal things that just they express it in a different way. Mm -hmm. So I, I just, I love it. I think it's so exciting. So um, my next question for you is, um, so obviously you've done plenty of shows, activities, et cetera. So can you explain to us what sorts of activities or exercises that have your students and found fun? You know, what, what, what did they find enjoyable? You know, what, what has really stood out to you in that manner? You know? Um, we, you know, from the first day with the Unify class, I just started playing games, you know, things I would have done when I did improv. And improv really stuck with a lot of the students because there's no wrong way to do it. You know, they can say whatever. Uh, obviously there's a goal of trying to match up with each other, but that's why it's so great is because the improv for the, especially the students on the spectrum, it allows them to use their brain and find and solve that problem and get, and get connected to the person that made the comment before them. Mm -hmm. So my, my students really love improv across the board. Uh, sometimes that means we're doing something like freeze. Sometimes that means we're just doing activities where they have to think really fast. So maybe a sort of a charades or uh, <laughs> another game that they love is called categories. And that's where, you know, you go around and somebody might say types of trees and then everyone says a different tree. But because you get to know each other as a group, you can start choosing categories that are specific to each other. And so this is going to be really good for this one, or this is going to be tough for this one. Mm -hmm. um, 
but in shows, I mean, so games, I mean, I can play games for hours with Unified. I can play games for hours with my other classes. They love games. Yep. Um, but in terms of shows, mm -hmm. I found, I've tried to, I've tried to introduce both the classics and other, you know, different styles to my, to my, my crew. Yep. The very first show I did, <clears throat> coincidentally, was a student-written show. So the very first show I did at the high school was a show written by a senior. She had written it over the, the previous years with other teachers. Mm -hmm. I arrived, she contacted me right away before school started, mm -hmm. said, this is who I am. I have the script, would you like to read it? And blew me away. I'm, I, again, I'm like a year or two removed from Los Angeles. I'm a year or two removed from auditioning for stuff myself. Blew me away, it reminded me of something I would have seen on TV, like a, like a sitcom, but like a slightly higher quality of, you know, not like a, a, a corny thing. I think I understand what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but from a high school student, right? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. so that, I, don't, I guess that was a great choice because it got the community interested. Uh, it was the perfect show for us. It was the perfect show for a first year teacher to do. Mm. And um, it let them take ownership of what they did. And so that goodwill let me then go on to something like Almost Maine, which just happened to be like the most popular yeah. play. Yeah. And this school hasn't had a consistent theater program. Let's hit the big ones, right? So we do Almost Maine, we do Into the Woods, um, tried out, you know, other comedies. One thing that the students really liked was we did this um, play called 13 Ways to Screw Up a College Interview. Okay. It's, it's a very specific. I have, I have <laughs> what, what it might contain. Yep. <laughs> yep. So there's a lot of stuff like that where everyone, it's almost like SNL where everyone gets their own spotlight. So yep. and that play did have multiple spectrum students in it okay. because they were able to make believe and be someone else with a different sort of um, specific specificity about themselves. Yep. Uh, in fact, um, <clears throat> you know, so you'd have the student that's always talking on the phone or the student that, is a bully or a student that uh, thinks they're a vampire. And then, you know, it's great. It was great for the school as a whole. They loved watching their classmates do that, but it also was a little more casual compared to something like, um, with some, oh, we did Midsummer Night's Dream this year. So Midsummer Night's Dream yeah. on the other end of the spectrum is a little more difficult, a little more challenging, but um, I did it because I'm trying to bring Shakespeare into the school, we're doing Shakespeare classes. Yeah. So that, you know, again, we have, we try to do the gamut. Uh, and that's the thing that the students know about me is I'm always gonna, I'm never gonna let them do a high school show. Mm. We might do shows that high schools do, yeah. but in terms of quality, we may not always be successful, but we're always gonna strive to do something where if someone came and didn't know anybody in the cast, they would, it would be like going to a local show, it'd be going to like maybe off Broadway or something like that. Definitely, definitely, yeah. All right, so um, so I'm gonna go into um, I believe we almost have just a little over five minutes left. Uh, mm -hmm. So I'm going to ask just one more kind of two part question. Um, so if so, if someone wanted to contact the Norwich Free Academy, uh, you know, to either to place a student, to you know, whatever, mm -hmm. uh, how would they do that? And number two, um. What does the future hold for your program at the school? Uh, what, what do you hope to be doing, you know, a couple of years from now, say? Sure. Uh, well, in order to contact, if you want to reach out to me, it's just Trostler P, T-R-O-S-T-L-E-R-P, at nfaschool.org. Mm -hmm. And if you go to nfaschool.org, the website, you'll see directory and you can find me. Okay. But uh, in terms of the future, Thanks for asking, because there's probably something I should mention. Uh, yeah. We are um, starting to collaborate with the Miracle Project. Okay. So, uh, Project New England, I presume? Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. So uh, Elaine Hall from Los Angeles, she came to visit at the beginning of the year. Student services at my school got me involved because I've worked with Unified. And it just, it was one of those meetings where everyone left very ecstatic because it was that perfect fit. Of like, here's what she's offering. Here's what we do. Oh my God, where have we been all our lives? So uh, of course the pandemic has sort of put a pause, but at the time the pandemic happened, our unified class was <clears throat> about to put on a show. It wasn't gonna be a Miracle Project show, but it was the first year before we started working with them. Uh, that was gonna be for Autism Awareness. 
-hmm. So we were in the process of, of doing that. The goal is that at the beginning of next year or as soon as we can, we'll, we'll start becoming a Miracle Project school. Uh, I guess it might be one of the first in the nation where we might be officially collaborating with them, officially being trained as Miracle Project teachers, uh, professional development, and yearly doing a Miracle Project show mm -hmm. where our uh, students um, in the special ed program are going to be able to have a show made around them based on who they are. They're not going to have to necessarily put themselves into a box in order to fit apart. They're mm -hmm. going to be themselves. Or if they want to, I mean, if they want to write something, we can do whatever they want to do. But it's going to be something where even more of a collaboration between our unified program and the natural NFA play shop, which has only right now only really occurred with the kids that audition. Mm -hmm. There's two different things we do. This yeah. way we can combine them into one thing and it's just a natural it's a natural um, evolution of what we've been doing at the school. Great. All right, thank you, Philip. Uh, you, you gave us a lot of good information. Uh, I hope everyone enjoyed this segment. Um, Spectrum Theater would love to reach out and uh, collaborate with you and your program in the future. Um, so thank you very much. Perfect, thanks so much for having me. Like I said, this is like the most exciting part of my day. So, <laughs> and it would have been for anyway, but this is, it's just been nice actually having a conversation, so. Alrighty, yep. thank you, yep. Have a good one.